Guys, it's Thursday night, so you know what that means. Welcome to the High Spots Virtual Gimmick Table. I, of course, am the guru, Tommy Thomas, here with a man who, he needs no introduction, but I will let this gentleman introduce himself to the masses out there. Well, just in case you've been living in a cave, I wore the shirt, which tells you who I am. You're, you're, you're too young to remember these days, but this was a special time in the wrestling business. I'm Arn Anderson, I'm the enforcer, and I was part of a uh, little known group called the Four Horsemen. Right there. Straighten out those fingers. Right there. There you go. Four Horsemen in the building, one of the longest tenured members of the group. I think you were in it from start to finish, if I remember correctly. I named us. I was one of the uh, founding members, and every version that there ever was, some good, some bad, I was a member of. Absolutely. I think they're all good versions of them, no matter who was in the group. But guys, we are here because he is right now on an incredible book tour, and we were his first stop for this, obviously outside of the podcast, correct? That's correct. But this is the first place where you can get a signed copy, which you're seeing right here, maybe in the background, maybe right here on this little screen right here, of Arn Anderson's book. So right now, head on over to highspotsauctions.com. We'll give you time. We'll give you time. Play this in the background while you're heading over to highspotsauctions.com and get your last chance to get this book signed by the one and only the enforcer Arn Anderson. There will be no personalizations, but you can see exactly how he signs each and every copy of this book. Now, I was fortunate enough to get an advanced copy of this book so I could read through it and be prepared for this interview. Um, the stories you tell aren't the traditional stories that you've told over the years in several interviews and your other books and all that other stuff. So what inspired you to tell some of these newer stories that some of the fans might not have heard? We all don't come from silver spoons in our mouth. We all don't come from families that have two parents that love us dearly and do all the right things to raise us. I would say, though, if you check around the world, grandparents are the superheroes of the world. Yes, sir. Because they, uh, me included, which uh, they pick up the slack for broken homes and people that shouldn't have babies have babies but grandparents step up by and large and i wanted everyone to know how i felt about my grandparents what they did for me so if you are in one of those scenarios that if the dad did a flyby and that's all he contributed and kept going the mom is doing all she can it's usually not enough nor should it be uh, the grandparents are very valuable to us all. That's one of the things that I wanted to come from this book, uh, along with the wrestling stuff and how I started and all the breaks that I got and just, you know, what went into actually becoming Arn Anderson. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Now, in this book, it's absolutely beautifully illustrated. Some of the quintessential moments of your career that people can see just these images of, that infamous Four Horsemen promo. The one where you guys all have your hands in the center that we used to sell here at HighSpots.com. They are beautifully illustrated in this book. Are there any images from there that really stand out to you where you were like, wow, they really encapsulated that moment? Well, they gave me muscles where I didn't have muscles, which I was fantastic with that, as you can imagine. I mean, you're still buff. You go, guys. I was never really bothered. Well, you're bigger than I am, damn it. Well, I mean, I got this. That's what I got going well, for me. We're going to blame it on something else, because <laughs> I have that as well. Uh, I, I mean, the Source Point Press, those guys, Dirk and his crew, did a great job. I mean, the artwork is first class. It's top shelf. If you're a comic book person, you will enjoy this. Most people tell me, and I'm interested to get your opinion, was it a one read deal for you? You read straight through oh, it? Oh, read completely straight through it. That's where most people are telling me. And that, that makes for, I did the right thing. Absolutely. If you got, you know, if it's, if it's Tale of Two Cities or something that you got 500 pages you got to struggle with, it's not what we're shooting for here. We're just shooting for, oh God, I never knew that. I never knew that. And uh, before you know it, you're at the end. And it's, uh, it is a success story. 
great American dream, uh, the all-American dream, whatever you would like to call it. Anybody that came from where I came and was fortunate enough to be sitting here with you at 65 years old, don't think I, that is lost on me, that somebody still wants to hear what I have to say, that's a success story. Now, was it your idea, the way that this is laid out, this isn't like a traditional graphic novel. It's laid out where someone is produ or producing an interview with you and you're telling them stories about your life. Was that your idea or did the publisher come to you with that? You know what, that uh, Dirk had, a, I think that was his idea and that was pretty smart. It was different, it was pretty cool. That company does a great job. They were victims of the shipping issues that we everything had you know, from lumber to everything else from this pandemic, which set the world behind. Uh, it was ready way before we got it here in the States because of the shipping issues and having to take different routes and pirates robbing everything as usual, thieves, the scourge of our world. People think they can just take, but let's don't get off on that. Uh, and uh, it finally got here and people were very, very patient. And I think it being a lighthearted feel good the way I took it. And I hope it came across that way to you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. You know, uh, then it was uh, it was the right thing to do. A lot of work went into it, though. That's for sure. And your sense of humor comes across absolutely excellently in this in this graphic novel now recently we've lost the great Ole anderson not to change topics on it but he is a big part of this book uh do you have any stories that you want to share or things that you want the fans at home to know about mr Ole anderson this was kind of inside but if you know the characters you'll appreciate uh, Ole and I, when we first got together, they put us with the Rock and Roll Express. Now, Ole's era, his mentality was, those guys are too small. We can't go out there and bounce around for these guys. They're too small. The, the wrestling business, that was the mentality during that era. We're talking late 70s, early 80s. Uh, so Ole and I, are, I think it was Greenville, South Carolina, we're wrestling the Rock and Roll Express, and uh, I'm just become his partner, and I'm I'm watching what he does and why he does it. He was be, he was being a mentor and didn't even know it. So he jams Ricky Morton back in the corner, and Ricky comes out with those punches, bang, bang, bang. But Ole's got the top rope, and he's got him trapped. And Ricky must have hit him ten times. And Ole did the top rope hang on wobble. Finally, I'm, I'm watching this, and, I, and Ricky just pushes him out of the way and takes two steps and goes right on his nose. And I went, what are you doing? He looked at me and went, somebody got to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Robert across the way started laughing. I'm laughing. The referee's <laughs> laughing. And I think Ole got his respect that day. Um, and Ricky got Ole's respect. Uh, but that was just one of those stories. Um, Ole and I didn't, because he wasn't, I mean, he was a much, at this point in his career, he had been the booker for Georgia Championship Wrestling, part owner. He had booked the Carolinas. He had been a top wrestler with Gene his entire career. This was just pretty much, uh, this was just a coup de grace for him. He was gonna have a little bit more fun. Business was taking, taking hold and firing up and Jim Crocker Promotions was on fire. WWF was on fire. You know, and he's just going to have one last run, and, and that's what it turned out to be. But he wasn't a guy that came down to the Marriott Bar and had drinks with, with the boys. He, uh, he wrestled his match. He traveled alone. He went and got something to eat and went to his room. He was pretty much to himself. And when you got seven kids, I imagine that probably takes all your spare time when you're on the road, I would think. Absolutely. That's a long phone call home. Yep, and when you got to discipline seven kids over the phone, which I'm sure at some point during their their ages you had to, uh, but he was just all business all the time. Yes, and sir. it's a the industry lost a guy. You know, Ole was a 
he was a grouch and he was a grump and he said what he thought and he told you exactly what he thought and he didn't care what anybody else thought about what he thought. He was just one of those guys, but he was always very fair to me, he treated me well, and the rub he gave me being an Anderson, you couldn't have bought that for any price. Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, speaking of prices, once again, these books are still available on highspotsauctions.com, but you said that people can pick these up in bookstores coming soon? They can, Barnes and Nobles, it should be, if, if nothing else, you can pre-order from there which I think for me, if you'd have told me I would have a book of any kind in Barnes and Nobles, which is pretty upscale book joint, right? Yes, sir. Wouldn't you say? I would have said that's not possible. But yeah, you can get them. You can get them on, if you go to the Arn Show uh, on Twitter, it'll tell you how to get them there. Uh, several different places. Yes, sir. Uh, are there any special issues, causes, charities you think the fans at home should learn a little bit more about? Say that again? Are there any charities, uh, special causes, or anything that you think the fans should learn a little bit more about or just be more mindful of? So you're wanting to get into who is Arn Anderson? Well, I mean. But behind the behind the wrestler, right? Is that where well, you're, what you're reaching well, I, for? I'm, something that they didn't know about me? I mean, I'm just asking if there's anything like you think maybe like uh, some people come up here and say like the ASPCA for dogs or some people say uh, anything with uh, uh, the Wounded Warrior Project or things like that. So I was just wondering if there's anything that you wanted to plug that maybe some of the fans at home might want to investigate or Well, I'm a definitely a dog person. Uh, I'm an animal person, but mostly I'm a dog person because that's what we've always had. Now, Wounded Warrior, that speaks for itself. Anybody that doesn't support that doesn't need to live in this country. Uh, but basically, my biggest charity, the one that I devote starting the last two years, myself too, is me. <laughs> I, I'm that guy. Uh, you know, for my entire career, people made money off of Arn Anderson. Yes, sir. Guess what? The last, thanks to Tony Hunter, the last two years and the Comic Cons and all the things that the uh, independent shows that he's booked for me and my family and taking care of us, uh, I'm my charity. So donate and donate big. Donate by buying these books right now right. on HighSpotsAuctions.com. Mr. Anderson, please plug everything you want to plug into that camera right there. Uh, 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 wherever we are, wherever Brock is, uh, I would appreciate it if wrestling fans would support him. If you feel like you should, if you see something in that young man, that I've already seen in him or we wouldn't be making these attempts to, to break in the business. Any support you can give him, please do. He's, he's going to be a good one. Just be patient with him. He is the reason that I'm still, believe it or not, I was just chick kidding about me being my own charity. The reason I'm still out in the public eye, because let's face it, it's a young man's game, is to get him started, do all I can do to help him. He has the aptitude. He definitely has the attitude. Good athlete. He's a good kid. And if you sat down and talked to him, one of these conversations, you would be in shock that he's only had probably 30, 40 matches total. And he's only been in the business a couple years. Oh. So any support you can give him, I would be very appreciative. Absolutely. Hopefully uh, he comes up with a great nickname, like you were the enforcer. Maybe he can be the trigger man or something like that. Hey, Devil, plug your store with the shirts. Oh, yeah, plug the store. Plug the... Yeah, well, it's uh, at the Arn Show. Uh, box of gimmicks. This is one of the uh, first things that was ever put out with the Horseman Collectively. It goes all the way back to to Jim Crockett Promotions. This, I think this was the first shirt and it's kind of endured the test of time, but you can get hats, you can get, you know, you can get horseman jackets, you can get any number of t-shirts. Again, my entire career, I never had a t-shirt with, with my likeness on it until just the last few years. And uh, you can pick it up at Box of Gimmicks or the Horseman Store, either one. 
Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the one and only, the enforcer, Arn Anderson, right here of the Four Horsemen. Guys, we're going to play like a random clip so that we can redo the set, and we'll be back with more VGT in just one moment.